Hey, this is Paul Lathrop from the Polite Society Podcast, reminding you that this podcast is a member of the Self-Defense Radio Network. Check out all the other great podcasts on the network at selfdefenseradio.net. Unload and Show Clear is made possible by our patrons, Stuart Jepp, Bob Slaybaugh, Chris Irvin, Frank Scalise, and Jung Cho. Thank you so much for your support. To find out how you can support the show, visit unloadpodcast.com slash patrons. Welcome to Unload and Show Clear. And now, here's your host, the slayer of non-threats, Lloyd Bailey. Hey folks, welcome to another episode of Unload and Show Clear. This is episode number 156. I'm your host, Lloyd Bailey, the slayer of non-threats. And this is a show about the men and women of IDPA, the everyday people who make this sport great. They volunteer their time, their money, their hard work to improve their skills, to grow the sport, to put on local and sanctioned matches. And um, they are uh, awesome people who deserve a little bit of the spotlight. And today we're going to introduce you to another new guest. And we're going to talk a little bit about the, um, the major matches that took place here in November of 2020. Um, going to look at the first at the results from um, a match that is one of my favorites, uh, the uh, Lone Star Championship from the Triple C Tactical Range in Crescent, Texas, was held the first weekend of November. Not a single former guest were was uh, were among the division winners. There's something we're going to have to do something about that. I'm working on it. We'll see if we can. Uh, make that happen but lots of awesome shooters atop the leaderboards uh pcc master matt smith took the top overall score and was division champion kevin harding whom we mentioned in our last episode from mckinney texas following up on his uh, division win at the fall brawl last month was the carry optics division champion austin pru from fruta colorado was the CCP division champ. He had the fastest overall time for um, competitors shooting pistols with iron sights. Uh, Jay Whitaker from Colorado Springs, Colorado, took home the ESP division title. Kyle Fender from Pollock, Texas, was the SSP division champion, hoping to get Kyle on the show in the near future. Bruce Kilgore from Tempe, Arizona, came over to win the bug division. And Trent Walker from Grand Junction, Colorado, won the CDP title. And I almost forgot, Ernest Martin from Huntington, Texas, won the revolver title. Got to give the revolver guys some love. Hats off to the uh, match directors and staff for putting together some creative categories in this match, too. In addition to standards like High Lady, won by former guest Mandy Bachman, uh, high Law Enforcement, which was won by former guest Brian Buller, and High Junior, won by Cannon Thomas. Uh, they had the I'm Just Here for Lunch category, which was won by uh, the aforementioned Kyle Fender, and uh, the Tactical Timmy category, which was won by Ernest Martin, and uh, Kevin Harding won the Tacos and Beer category. Um, sounds like a lot of fun. Cannon Thomas, by the way. What an awesome name. The best name for any kid who is into guns. Cannon Thomas. Awesome. And if anybody knows how to get in touch with him, by the way, let me know. I'd like to chat with him. I'd love to have him on the show in the future. Congratulations to all the shooters uh, who competed in the Lone Star Championship. I hate I wasn't there this year. Definitely hoping 2021 is better. And uh, congratulations to former guest, match director, Brian Erler for another successful match. And by the way, you can check out my interview with Brian all the way back in episode 29 um, or my interview with Mandy Bachman from episode 38 and Brian Buller, who was a guest in episode 143. 
Um, the Space Coast Challenge was uh, held November 13th and 14th. We don't have any scores yet, so I'm going to uh, hold off, and we will give those folks a shout-out in our next episode. But I have it on good authority that Mark Few from uh, Jacksonville Beach, Florida, won his third straight D- D- CDP division title. So a preliminary congratulations to him. Uh, I've reached out to Mark. Hopefully I can get him on the show in a future episode. Let's move on to um, something that took place in Georgia that same weekend, the um, Zero Down at the River Bend, which was hosted by the River Bend Gun Club in Dawsonville, Georgia. Derek Giddings uh, posted the top overall score and was the PCC division champion. Former guest John Horvath from Hebron, Indiana, and Clint Bowen from Winston, Georgia, battled it out for first and second place in carry optics, with Horvath taking home the title by just on, just uh, under four seconds. Now, you can hear my interview with John Horvath in episode 44 and Clint Bowen from earlier this year in episode 146. Former guest, Matt Penninger. Matt Penninger. I love to call him Peninger, uh, from Nashville, Tennessee, won the bug division. What on earth are you doing shooting bug? Good heavens. Check out my interview with Matt back in episode 88. Ramiro Macias, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, Ramiro. He is uh, from Pike Road, Alabama. He was the CCP division winner, and Ramiro will be on the show in a future episode. Got him scheduled for an interview and looking forward to talking to him. Brady Harden from Piedmont, Alabama, won the CDP division crown. Carlton Jones from Cartersville, Georgia, won the ESP title. Quentin Ho from Ann Arbor, Michigan, came down to Georgia to win the SSP division. And Todd Miners was the lone revolver shooter in the match. Even if there's just one guy shooting the wheel gun, I got to give him some love. Congratulations to all the competitors. And thank you to match directors, um, Stephen Petrakovich, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, and Paul Moser. Uh, I bet that's Petrakovich. Let me try that again. Congratulations to all the competitors, and thank you to match directors, uh, Stephen Petrakovich and Paul Moser and all the staff for making the match possible. Again, um, we'll be talking about the Space Coast Challenge next week. That was held November 13th and 14th as well. And coming up is the, um, the Sheepdog CCP Championship. We'll talk about that next time as well. All right, time to switch gears and introduce today's special guest. Today's guest finished sixth overall at the Tennessee State IDPA Championship back in August. He was the CDP Division Champion as well. Paul Carr from Morristown, Tennessee is our guest. Paul, welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me, Lloyd. So tell us a little about yourself. What do you do for a living there in Morristown? Well, I actually work for a waterworks supply house. Uh, I sell uh, stuff to municipalities and contractors for underground utilities with uh, water, sewer, and gas. Okay. Does that, does that, uh, involve much travel or, or is that all in the age of COVID? Are you doing all of that, uh, from home? I don't, I'm actually an inside sales, so I get to, to hang out in the office most days. I do a little bit of travel, a little bit outside stuff, but, uh, for the most part, we've, uh, we've managed to stay open and, uh, and actually rolling pretty good, even with all the, the happenings of 2020. Uh, <laughs> Which is a great thing this year. I'm very thankful for that. Absolutely. Native of Tennessee? Uh, yes, sir. Born in, uh, born in East Tennessee. Uh, well, actually, born in West Tennessee, but uh, all my memories are from East Tennessee. Uh, actually, in a little town, a one red light town called Rutledge, Tennessee. Is where I grew. Rutledge, Tennessee. Well, Morristown's not exactly in the... In it not, ain't booming. Uh, it ain't, um, <laughs> it's not a big <laughs> metropolis. No, it's, uh, <laughs> it's right between Knoxville and Bristol. Yep. Yep. So growing up in West and East Tennessee and in, in rural parts of the state, uh, I can probably guess, but where did the interest in firearms come from? Well, um, 
actually everybody hunted and everybody shot, <laughs> but, uh, I was super lucky. Um, in the late eighties and early nineties, my dad was involved in Ipsic. Um, oh. and I gr- actually got to grow up with a plate rack in my back- backyard. Um, <laughs> I, I heard make ready. I heard, are you ready? Stand by. I heard buzzers. Um, I saw my dad dry fire. But, uh, so I had, I had a little bit of a head start. Um, but he actually, uh, he fell ill, um, when I was a little kid and had to quit competing. Oh. So I never actually got to shoot a match with him. And, uh, I was an adult before I shot my first match. Um, but that was definitely a big leg up. Um, because i I remember shooting pistol, 22 pistols when I was, I don't know, five or six. Um, it, it was not strange <laughs> to, uh, to go out and shoot pistols in the backyard. So growing up with dad, the competitive shooter and once, what was it, why did it take so long before you actually took up competitive shooting yourself? In the in high school, I shot. Uh, it was basically Olympic small bore. It was a competitive air rifle, mm-hmm. and, uh, ARTC, and uh, I enjoyed that. But then I got interested in cars and motorcycles, and uh, I want I wanted to go fast. So <laughs> I was I was far more interested in in cool vehicles than I was anything to do with shooting, and college for just very short time and then ended up going to work and went back to college to do some to some uh, circumstances to come up and uh i shot my first match in probably 2013 14 uh, and shot it with a glock 19 <laughs> and uh, <laughs> went to a match and uh it, my dad made me go um, we, we would talk all the time about shooting and he said you know oh you're pretty good but you'll you'll never unless you compete and uh he was right um i thought i was good and then i realized i was absolutely not good <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> i started shooting competitively in 2014 um got out of college got a what i'll call a real job <laughs> and uh and then uh started shooting competitively then and uh things have been a downhill ever since you said that you discovered that you weren't as good a shooter as you thought you were. What was the what was that first competitive match like? Was it IDPA? Oh. Was it was it IPSC? What and what do you it remember was, from that day? My very first one. I remember shooting a little local match. Uh, it was a USPSA match, and uh, I was like, there was maybe fifteen people there. Um, it was raining. It was cold. It was miserable, and. Uh, <laughs> I, I was like mid pack, and I was like, "Wow, you know, I'm, I am a pretty good shooter." And uh, the next time I went was, uh, I decided, you know, hey, I might want to pick this up. It looks cool. Um, I can't, I couldn't ride or race motorcycles anymore, so I was like, well, I might have to pick this up. So I went, and uh, I remember shooting this one stage, and on on our squad, I shot it pretty fast. It, it had a couple bobbers, a couple movers, um, and a couple pieces of steel. And looking back on it, it's a fast little speed shoot. Well, I shot in like 18 seconds. And uh, on my squad, that's a fast time. And then I looked at the scores afterwards. And uh, this was, I think this was pre-practice score. But uh, I remember looking once everything came out, and I was like, yeah, I, I shot that stage pretty good. And then I see there's this old guy that I saw there at first who was having to be Gilbert Perez, um, you know, multi-division grandmaster in the USPSA. <laughs> um, he, uh, I shot the stage in 18 seconds and he shot it in six with better hits. Holy. And I was like, <laughs> wait, <laughs> hold up, you know, man, I suck at this. Um, and I went the next weekend and bought a Glock 35. Um, and, uh, <laughs> that 35 is what I started shooting USPSA and IDPA. And, uh, I, I could afford one gun and, you know, try to scrape together enough stuff to load to trigger job to it. And that's what I started to be. Uh, but yeah, getting my butt kicked that bad didn't feel that good. So I was like, Man, I want to get at this. And, uh, and I just went from there and it's, I've gave up all my other hobbies since then. And I'm absolutely okay with it. I really love the, the competitive shooting sport. So you had the, the, 
the need for speed that drove you to motorcycles and fast cars and then USPSA, what, how did you get introduced to IDPA, which most people would suggest is a lot slower sport? Well, shooting is shooting. Comp- competing with pistol is competing with pistol. Um, and I had the, I, I was very lucky the first and third weekends I could drive which again, I lived out in the sticks, so I had to drive a little over an hour, but I could shoot, you know, the, I started in USPSA, so I could shoot a match, uh, the first and third weekend. Well, then I found out there were IDPA matches the second week. So I was like, well, heck, I'm just going to go to these, you know, I want to shoot every week. And, uh, I went and I shot that same Glock 19 at my first match. And, uh, I was like, wow, this is, it's different, but it's still shooting. It's still fun. Um, I still want to go fast. (laughs) <laughs> and uh that's really where that it went from there it's i liked it because it was it was slightly more applicable um because you know most people don't carry a, a glock 35 and a bunch of my that hold 20 <laughs> um but i could shoot my glock 19 and still be competitive right. um well i say competitive i i, I sucked but you know it was <laughs> um you know it's something it's just something else to shoot it was another day that i could i could go to the range and, and shoot with my buddies Mm-hmm. And uh, I got into it that way, and it really helped me because I had some friends that me and them kind of came up about the same time, and uh, it was just something else for me to try to beat my buddies at. Gotcha. And uh, I just, again, I love competing with pistol. I don't really care what sport it is. I just <laughs> love competing. With um, but IDPA was uh, it was it was a little bit more accuracy based, which I needed. Right. Um, I started out, I could pull the trigger fast, but I couldn't hit anything. Um, <laughs> and an IDPA would force me to aim a little more. Yep. And once 2017 came around, <laughs> you couldn't out, yeah. you couldn't outrun bad shooting. Right. Um, <laughs> that actually was really cool to me. Um, I, I, I'll, I'll rewind it a little bit. The way that I, I was able to improve was the first, first year that I shot, 20, late 2014, mm-hmm. started. Um, we have a local match at uh, Oak Ridge Sportsman Association. It's called Toys for Tots. Okay. And it's a mixed discipline charity match so that you bring bring all your Toys for Tots stuff. It's a normal, you know, try to bring as much toys as you can for kids. And uh, there's a little prize table, um, and it's a mixed discipline match. So you'll have like a USPSA-style stage, IDPA-style stages, uh, Steel Challenge, Pro-Am, Fallen Steel. Um, it's just, you know, a little bit of everything. And I picked up a certificate off of the prize table, I was like, I don't know, 20th or something uh, the first time, which I was really happy with. Right. Um, but uh, I picked up a certificate for Patriot Shooting Academy, uh, and it was Gilbert Perez, the guy that, you know, kicked my butt <laughs> when I was starting. I was like, hey, this guy's good. I need to take some class. And anybody that wants to get started in shooting, I always tell them, what do I need to buy? A serviceable nine millimeter. You know, it'll probably come with three mics. Get a good holster, good mic carriers, and buy as much ammo and instruction as you can get. Right. Uh, and I started taking classes with him, and in 15, I started training with him early 15. Um, in mid-15, I got classified in IDPA, and actually initially cl- classified as expert. Oh. Uh, and I was B-class USPSA. Um, that's where I started. And I, uh, in 15, I shot the Secret City Challenge, the Tennessee State match, mm-hmm. and was second overall ESP and first ESP expert. Wow. Um, I got the bump there. <laughs> A month later, I shot Virginia State um, and was first ESP master and second overall uh, to uh, to Morgan Allen. Oh, wow. So um, the... Uh, the practicing with, you know, and actually training, not mm-hmm. just putting rounds down. Right. Um, that instruction, that's the reason that I was able to, to move up very quickly. Wow. You, you, <laughs> you classified in the, it, like right off the bat, jumped into the deep end and expert. And the very first yep. match you shoot, you, you bump to master. So you didn't yes. get to wade around in the in the kiddie pool much <laughs> and and rack up any 
any no. uh, any trophies before you went right to the hard part of the game. Yep. Um, what do you remember about that first, the Secret City Challenge, the 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 one you get where you get bumped to master? Take us back to that day, and was it, that was your first sanction match, right? That was my first major. Yep. What was uh, that like? So, I was shooting with with people I knew, like the the people from. Orsa, and uh, we're very, very lucky. We get to shoot with some really great shooters there. Uh, there's always a ton of masters at local IDPA matches. Um, there's some real heat that shows up just to low. So I was squatted with people I knew, um, and Jason Edwards was the one that, uh, that won that match. And I was squatted with him, and I remember just being like, my God, this guy's just insane. <laughs> you know, how, how do I do that? And I thought, you know, I'm not doing horrible the whole time. I thought I'm not doing horrible, but I'm not doing great. <laughs> and uh, we got to the end of it, and scores come out, and I was like, "Well, that ain't right." You know, they 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 forgot to put like a stage in there or something. <laughs> um, you know, it's, <laughs> there's no way that's right. And uh, got to the end of it, I was like, "Wow, I I can't believe it, it was just shock, just pure shock." <laughs> uh, I was like, "Well, I guess I'm a master now." <laughs> um, <laughs> And uh, that's just, it, I really fell into it. I had no idea what, how that that was going to work. And uh, yeah, it just, it just happened. <laughs> Probably haven't heard that too many times. No, <laughs> most of the, I was just talking to, um, you know, I've, I've talked to several people who I call them kind of accidental masters where they went out to the, to the range and they, they walked some friends or some new members through the classifier and then they shot it themselves and accidentally ended up, you know, bumping to master, not really meaning to, and they did it right, like right before a major match, which is always fun. Yep. Um, but to go out your very first match and, and to <laughs> bump to master with, and, and go through the match, not feeling like you did all that well, that's, that's I, a, yeah, that's a first. <laughs> I will say this though. I've shot, one match that I can two matches that I can recall in any shooting sport that I don't look back on and said I shot that good. Uh, <laughs> Is I'm, it? I'm my worst critic uh, by a lot. <laughs> Maybe that's not a bad thing. I mean, do you get some of that from how does your how did your dad's career uh, as a competitive shooter influence you? Do you get some of those same that same self criticism from him, or is or is your attitude it, towards the game a little different it's all it's a lot different um he really enjoyed the, the shooting and um he did it i don't think he took it quite as serious as i did um i'm kind of ultra competitive um <laughs> if i if i do anything i want to be the best at it um and i don't think he quite viewed it the same way it was more of a, a relaxing fun thing mm -hmm. that he did um, but I just, I don't know if I, if I decide to do something, I, I tend to go a little overboard. With it. <laughs> What's, um, aside from shooting every local match that you could, you could drive to, what's, what was the practice routine? Like, what did, what did it take in addition to the, to the, uh, the training, what else did you do to build that skill uh, oh. to go from the kid shooting 22s with his dad to master as an adult. So I, when I was, I considered when I was coming up, when I was trying to figure out the shooting, um, I would drive our 30 minutes in the morning before work, uh, work all day, come home, get something to eat, and then drive fire for an hour to hour and a half at night. Oh, wow. Uh, I live by myself. So I could do what I wanted. <laughs> <You know>? Right. <laughs> so, I, I, I definitely took advantage of that. Um, but huh. that, that was really what helped me was I couldn't, the first year I shot a lot, but I drive hard a lot. Mm -hmm. um, and I drive hard, I drive hard, I drive hard. And then I would actually use local matches to see how my training was going. Um, right. Just you kind of use that as a benchmark, and then you use the majors to try to show your performance on demand. Mm -hmm. um, and I shot a lot. I think I shot 30,000 rounds first year. Um, 
and that was mostly bought ammo, like factory, <laughs> federal 180 grain 40s. Um, and then uh, every year since, I've shot a lot. I've, I've actually shot less this year than I have since I started shooting, and it was because you know we lost. Well, yeah, <laughs> the first of the season when when COVID hit. Yep. Uh, but a ton of live fire and even more dry fire, and and practicing with a purpose. Um, I would get to where I could pull the trigger real fast, or I thought I could pull. You know, I could shoot twenty splits. Um, so <laughs> then I was like, oh, all right, well I can do that. And then I would I would go in cycles and practice accuracy, and then practice speed, and then practice accuracy, and practice speed. And that's what helped me to move forward was focus on something and try to have perfect practice. If I'm going to practice transitions, I want it to be perfectly, I want to stop exactly where my front side needs to stop. Um, if I'm going to practice accuracy, then oh, like now I do, I warm up I, the start of every practice is between 30 and 50 yards, uh, trying to work on better accuracy. Mm. Uh, and I just pick something. I pick what I feel like are my, what I'm the worst at, and that's what I practice. I don't get, I don't hardly ever practice the fun stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> um, you know, if I'm good at something, then I pr- you want to practice enough. You want to improve on it some, but you don't need to spend a bunch of ammo and time on it. Right. Uh, so I, I try to pick areas that I need to improve on, and that's where that I'm going to focus my practices. On. And I've done that since the beginning because, you know, Gilbert would tell me, you know, okay, you're, you're working on this. This is making good progress. Keep doing what you're doing. You really suck at this other thing. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Cool. Practice and, what um, you suck well, at. <laughs> right. Um, and, you know, we can all go out and do build drills all practice. And, you know, it looks cool on Instagram. <laughs> and, uh, right. It feels awesome. But that's not what you need to be doing to improve. Uh, right. That That's my, my focus is, is to try to focus on the things I'm bad at. So is the practice routine the same every time or is it, okay, today I'm working on this and I'm focusing on that the entire practice or is, or what's, what does that routine look like? Let's say leading up to a major match, what is, how do you go into it? How do you prepare? It depends on like, if I'm going into an IDPA state match in CDP, Mm -hmm. um, which I like CDP, I shoot, I like to shoot major across the board, either. 40 major, 45 major. And uh, if I'm going into a state match, I'm going to be practicing partials at distance. Um, I'm going to be really working on on the accuracy side of things, especially now with one second per point now. Right. Um, so I'm going to, you know, yeah, I'm absolutely going to be pushing that. I'm going to shoot plate racks. I'm going to do the drills that I normally do for prep on any match. Or, they're all very similar, mm-hmm. um, but I will tailor for the type of match it's going to be. If I'm going to shoot an IDPA match or Ipsic Nationals, you know, I know those are going to be accuracy based. If I'm going to shoot a different kind of match or if I'm going to shoot a IDPA match that's known as being kind of hosey, yeah, I'm going to lay on the speed a lot more. Um, and so I definitely tailor it per match. Um, if I know, you know, hey, every time I've been to this range, they like to set mini poppers out at, you know, 15, 20 yards. Right. Then I'm going to practice like some burners and then stopping on those little mini poppers. Out. Um, that's, I, I try to tailor it for the match that way I can get the most out of the limited time that I have to practice. Cause I'm like everybody else I got a day job. Um, right. you know, I try to sneak practice in after work or, you know, a few hours on Saturday. Uh, it would, uh, I could definitely benefit from more hours available in the day. <laughs> well, it seems like you're, you're making very good use of the time. What was the what was the you talked about liking to shoot uh major power factor so at what point did you decide that that was where you wanted to go in idpa and what was the firearm you transitioned to well i uh i'm a big single stock guy mm-hmm. um love 1911s i started out with a Glock, went to a 1911 and uh i've actually kind of got hung up on this 1911 thing for like five years um <laughs> so i actually shoot for bull and uh, GP arms, and I shoot the bull nine. And right now I'm shooting a, uh, it's a railed single stack in 45. And the reason I like it is in every other sport, um, I'll shoot a 40 major power factor, just a regular 
uh, classic 1911. Mm-hmm. So this 45 tracks pretty much identical to my 40. Okay. Uh, and I spring them light. I want them to cycle fast. And I tend to load fairly hot on ammo. Um, but I like 45. It's real accurate. I like the big holes. I like it knock steel. I don't have to double steel right. to push it over. If I double a piece of steel, it's down instantly. <laughs> um, but uh, I just I really like shooting 45. They're, they're easy to be accurate. Um, I think, I don't know if it may just be an intrinsically accurate cartridge, but, uh, I actually shoot that gun better than anything else as far as I can. Well, before I ask you about, about this year's Tennessee match, uh, you, you mentioned shooting for bull. What was the, what was the, uh, attraction to, cause that's not a, um, a brand that a lot of people are familiar with. What was the attraction to that brand or the introduction to that brand how did you uh how did you end up shooting for them i actually found out about it through gilbert perez and uh i was shooting a uh time i didn't own a nine millimeter and uh <laughs> i ended up with a bull m5 one of the old classic plastic frames polymer frame right or double stack gun um so I ended up with that thing, shooting the Pro Am down in, uh, in Florida, Pro Am Nationals in '17, um, and got to talking to some guys that knew the people at Bull. Uh, went back and forth, and went from there, and ended up shooting for them. And uh, started out shooting single stacks. And in 2018, first year that I shot for them, um, I went and shot the Tennessee State IDPA match. Because I'm like, hey, I got a, I got a nine millimeter, nineteen eleven. That's, that's about as much of a cheater gun as you can get for out of here. Forty three ounce thing that doesn't move and has a two pound trigger. Heck yeah. Um, so at the time, I, you know, locally, it's like, yeah, he's fast, but he doesn't hit anything. <laughs> you know, it's like, I, I was, uh, I was a grandmaster in USPSA, master in ESP, but uh, 2018 Tennessee State IDPA. If I had to pick an IDPA match that I was most proud of, that'd probably be it. Um, I won ESP, this division champion, and I also won most accurate. Oh, wow. And I had the fastest raw time of the match and the most accurate. And I, that is the, that most accurate plaque <laughs> is one of my life. I cherish that thing. I'm usually like 30 points down. Um, but... <laughs> I was, I was super accurate. Um, I, I managed to, you know, actually, you know, knock over a couple big guys I didn't ex- expect to beat. And uh, I just shot a really solid match. And that was pro- that by far is my, my most memorable IDPA. Nice. Uh, but yeah, I, I like 1911s. Um, I shoot them, I, I shoot them in either 940 or 45. And uh, I just, I really like the single stack. They, they feel good and they shoot really good. So we talked about the the ten. I, I alluded to this year's uh, Tennessee match. You you finished sixth overall, less than a second behind the number one carry optics guy, and up yep. there with the the top uh, four PCC shooters. And you're shooting single stack CDP. How in the world? <laughs> Just I saw that. That's the re- that is. The, uh-huh. I was going through the scores and I saw that and I said I've got to get in touch with this guy. <laughs> Well, I did that at Virginia State too. The exact same thing. Um, <laughs> I think I think I got all but two of the uh, the PCC guys there. Um, yeah. I just I lean hard on speed. Um, that's uh, that's really what I, I focus on. Um, I believe in in fundamentals executed at speed. Um, like when uh, when you come up on a standard stage, a lot of people they start going, "Oh crap!" <laughs> <You know? laughs> I have to shoot strong hand only on this stuff, and that that's something I practice a lot. Um, and I I work really hard on being able to li- deliver that on demand. So if I practice really really hard stuff, when I'm given open targets or stuff a lot closer than when I normally practice, I can really stand on the gas. And that's the, well, that just is my style. I just go fast. Um, <laughs> I've, uh, I've been, I've been told that I just rage every stage, um, but, uh, that's really my style. Um, I shoot right on the ragged edge of what I can see. And, uh, I kind of let the speed carry me. Gotcha. Uh, 
What was uh, yeah. tell us about uh, that particular day? What what was what was the match like? Um, tell us about maybe your favorite stage or or a stage that stands out to you. A uh, a fun or an interesting moment that you could share from that day. Well, I like that. Uh... Their, their standard stage. I know, this just sounds really weird coming from somebody that's known for hosing. <laughs> but, well, yeah, uh, nobody says, hey, my favorite was the standard stage. They had a legitimately difficult standard stage that you could still execute. Oh. Um, and, you know, partials at distance, uh, 30 or so, uh, I think it's 25, 30 yards, something like that. And, uh, I mean, that was a good, solid standard stage. Um, I actually liked it. Um, and then, they had a couple stages where you could actually just stand on the gas for the entire stage. <laughs> so it's polar <laughs> opposites. Um, you know, if I stand and shoot, I want to be super accurate, super fast. But if you let me move a little bit, I'm probably just going to hose everything. Um, <laughs> but uh, I just really liked it. Um, there was one stage in particular. Uh, they had a couple good long runs. Uh, targets stacked fairly close together, so your transitions had to be lightning fast. Uh, I just, I really like them. Um, so, and one thing I really love about IDPA is you have a lot of interesting target presentation. Mm. Um, I like the, you know, you have three activators and a bunch of movers, but you have to shoot, you still have to shoot them in order by what it, you're exposed to. But it's more exciting because you can hit multiple activators, try to grab a paper in between them and come back to an, you know, the activator. <laughs> I love stuff like that. It's exciting. And uh, that's something that you don't get in in a lot of other matches. So the mental sort of game planning thing is is as much fun for you as pedal to the metal. Absolutely. Um, I like to, to try to figure out a, a fairly aggressive stage plan and try to execute it perfectly. That, that's the goal. Um, and, you know, like the... I like to take the risks the the when you can actually let it pay off. Um, I know with the uh, they had a a popper and a really slow activator, and you could actually point it out in CDB to shoot the gun empty on the popper, do a slide lock reload, and then shoot the swinger. <laughs> and it's like I watched somebody try it, and they just crash and burn. And I was like, oh well, I have to try it now. <laughs> you know, it's, somebody else tried it, I have to. Um, but I really enjoy stuff like that. Um, I really like the ragged edge speed as well as, like I said, the, the standard stages. I, I've actually come to enjoy those. So when you when you come up to a stage and the <clears throat> and the uh, safety officer says no one has ever done this today, is that That's sort a of a, is that a hold my beer moment for you? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, I, I remember in the the match that I was most accurate. Uh, walked up the standard stage. They said nobody's clean. <laughs> Bet. Um, <laughs> so I cleaned it. Um, I don't think I had the fastest time, but uh, I I was absolutely most accurate. I think I was one of maybe two or three people clean um, throughout the day. Nice. But I I like the challenge. I like if you're not compete if you're not pushing, then I don't I don't like it. Gotcha. Well, wh so what is it that uh, you love about IDPA? You shoot both sports. You like to shoot fast. I, as we kind of alluded to earlier, IDPA tends to be a little more, a little slower, and the opportunities to put the pedal down are are fewer. You have to be a lot more uh, judicious with your <laughs> with your decisions to go fast. Yes. What is it about IDPA that keeps you? keeps you satisfied enough to come back what do you love about like, idpa i like how technical it is and the risk versus risk versus reward about going fast mm. um I, I hear the some people say you know oh you can miss fast enough to win no <laughs> you, you can't in any sport if you're missing you're not winning um <laughs> but uh I, I really like how technical it is i like um the stages are laid out, especially when you have, like I said, the, the movers, the activators, stuff like that. It's stuff that you don't see as much um, because they're set up to they're set up to be challenging. But I like that now, especially like I, I really love the fault lines. I like that a lot better mm -hmm. now. I will 
the new rules, I'm, I'm a big fan. Yeah. Um, it makes it easier for me to, to think <laughs> through them rather than, you know, am I in cover? I don't want to think when I'm shooting. Right. Um, I like to be able to come in, put your foot there, and if you're in or you're out. Um, I like the new rules, and I actually like the one second per point. Now, like, I don't, of course, I would rather it be half second because I got to go for that. <laughs> but I mean, let's, let's be honest. I, I like shooting. But yeah, I'd like to drop more points. But uh, it's fun because it just makes you focus more. And I really like that. Um, I like that I can throw my carry gun on and be competitive. Mm. Um, you know, if you carry a 1911 and a couple of reloads, you can just take exactly what you wear during the day, go and actually be competitive. Um, I shot Virginia and Tennessee this year with my knife. Mm-hmm. It is legitimately what is kept with a flashlight on. Um, <laughs> the trigger's not as good as some other guns. You know, it's it's a pretty simple, you know, it's a very well-built knife. Not, it's not a $3,000 race gun. Right. You know, it's just, <laughs> It's it's just a 1911, um, and I like that. I can just grab. I, I've shot any time that I've got a new carry gun. I shoot it at EPA, um, <laughs> because it's it's practice with. It. If it's going to not work, it's going to not work right there. Yep. Because uh, we all know that if you go to a match with an unproven gun, it's going to you're going to find some, out something about it probably you don't like. <laughs> um, but uh, I really like that about it. I like that you can use just regular guns. Uh, yeah. anything you carry has a division that it's going to be at least fair at. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, it may not be, you know, the, the best gamer gun possible, but if you carry a XDS, there's a division that it fits in. If you carry a Glock 48, there's a division it fits in. Um, and they don't, they're not awful. <laughs> you know, right. even the, the little guns that, uh, uh, shoot the other sport with the Glock 26. And the whole time I was like, dang, man, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's rough. Um, you're reading a, loading a lot. Um, yeah. But, uh, you know, and, but in IDPA, there's actually a place that it fits. It makes sense. Yeah. And uh, you can compete against your buddies with your actual carry guns. And those are really, really fun. Uh, I like to be able to, you know, hey, I'm going to shoot my carry gun this week. You know, bring yours. And, <clears throat> The smack talk and the, <laughs> you know, it, it's a great way. I, I have a lot of fun at IDPA. Um, it's a, one of the nice things about just kind of unwinding on a Saturday. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, uh, I work an awful lot. <laughs> so I like to be able to just go have fun on the weekends. Right. Yep. It's that's as close as you're going to get to saying it's the people. I'm glad you didn't. I'm glad you didn't go to the cliche. Everybody, everybody <laughs> says it. I, 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 I like the answer. Very good, Paul Carr. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. It's been great to to get a chance to chat with you. And uh, glad I ran across your score on IDPA.com. And and uh, and I'm glad you responded when I reached out. And I hope I get a chance to uh, see you on the range down the road. It's been an honor, man. I really appreciate you having me on here, and uh, we'll definitely have to uh, to try to shoot together. Let me know if you're ever up in uh, in further north in the southeast. <laughs> Sounds good. I look forward to it. All right, man. I appreciate it. All right, that is all the time we have for today, folks. Thank you so much to our special guest, Paul Carr, for coming out. And uh, spending a little time, it was great to get a chance to meet him. As I mentioned earlier, we've got some, uh, I've reached out to some awesome people that I mentioned in uh, the results earlier in the show, and hopefully we will have them uh, appear on the show in the coming weeks. Uh, Let's see, what have we got coming up? Um, The, we've got two more episodes. That's all we've got left this year. The next episode, we're going to be talking about the Space Coast Challenge and the upcoming Sheepdog CCP Championship, and we'll be meeting another great guest. Then we're going to close out the year with episode 158, which will be on Christmas Eve, and we'll be uh, looking ahead to 2021, which, Lord willing, is a better year for all of us. Happy Thanksgiving to all of you and to your families. I hope... uh, 
Hope you have a great time despite all the craziness, despite all the lockdowns. Go and spend some time with your family and um, make sure that you're with your loved ones during this uh, holiday season. I hope you stay safe and have a good time. And I will talk to you again in two weeks.